Hello everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Ree's Kitchen. Today is our 100th episode, and to celebrate, we're doing a really special dish, porchetta. This, not many ingredients, but it takes a little while in the oven, but I can tell you, it is well worth it. So let's get straight into it, shall we? So first up, we have some pork belly, some pork mince, onion and garlic, parmesan, some stale bread, salt and pepper, rosemary, sage and parsley. So the star ingredient of our dish today is pork belly. Now I've been lucky enough that my butcher has scored it for me, as you can see, about a centimetre apart. If it, yours hasn't, you'll need to score down. You don't want to cut into the meat, just into the fat and the skin. What I'm going to do now is pop it on a rack. Now, normally if I wasn't filming, this rack would be over my sink, but it's over my dish. And I'm going to pour boiling water over it. And this is to help open up that scoring. So now I'm just going to pat that down because I want it really dry. And sprinkle some of our salt in it to help dry it further. And now I'm going to pop it back on my plate. Oops, and pop it in the fridge. Overnight is best, but at least for an hour, I want that to really dry. This is helping us get the perfect crackle. So now to make our delicious stuffing. So in here, I'm gonna add my pork. I finally chopped up my onion. A good pinch of salt. The Parmesan that I've grated. Now I've broken up my uh, stale bread and I'm just gonna pop it in water just for a minute or two, just to moisten it up. And then I'm gonna squeeze that water out and pop it into there. While that's soaking up, I'm just gonna finely chop our parsley and then add the sage and rosemary. Add in our rosemary. My kitchen smells so good with these fresh herbs. You can't beat them. And now the sage. So we'll pop our herbs in there now. And just mince in the garlic. Now with a little bit of cracked pepper. And I'm just gonna squeeze out my bread and pop that in. And now the last bit is using your hands is just to munch all of that together to make our stuffing. Now I've popped my oven on, 130 fan force Celsius of course, um, just to warm up. And we're gonna start now the problem, possibly the trickiest. Now you really do need your good sharp knife for this. So I've got my beautiful <laughs> Japanese blade. So I've taken out my pork belly and I'm going to turn it upside down so that the skin is facing down. And what we're going to do is butterfly it. So very carefully, I'm going to cut through the meat. I don't want to cut down to the skin. I just want to cut down to the fat and then I'm going to separate them over and open them out. So it doesn't matter if it's not exactly centre, but centre does make it easier. So this is what we have. 
our beautiful piece of pork. So I'm just going to put a little bit of pepper and salt on the middle flap. And now I'm going to pop our stuffing down just on the middle and spread it out over that whole piece. Now, we'll see how well we've spread that out in a minute. So we'll pop our flaps back. Doesn't matter if they don't fully meet anymore, but you don't want to have too much stuffing. Although some would say there's no such thing as too much stuffing. All right, a bit more salt and pepper. And now with our bunch of parsley, I'm going to grab about half of it and I'm going to lay it down this way. And then I'm going to grab the other half and I'm going to lay it down that way. I don't want the leaves to be sticking out, but I don't mind our stalks. And it looks like a lot, but we all know that it will cook down. And then I'm going to roll. Now I'm going to roll it long ways towards the camera here. It doesn't matter if they don't quite meet. As this one doesn't. And get it to there. So you're starting to see it coming together. Now to tie it up. There are many videos on YouTube to tell you how to use butcher's twine and do the fancy knots. This is not going to be one of them. The most important thing that we do is make sure that we have tightened it and we're going to take probably five um, pieces, maybe four, but probably five, just to hold it together. All right, so you need a pretty long piece of string. Now you need cotton string or butcher's twine because you don't want plastic melting into your um, pork. And I've got a pretty long piece here. It's probably close to two metres because I want to do it all in one hit if I can. So first up, under one end. So I bring it up and I tie it. Doesn't matter if it's not quite together there. Alright, and through. Well, it's not going to win any butchers awards, but it's held it together and that's what counts. All right. Now I'm going to just trim these off a little bit here because they will burn. Now, because we want this to stay succulent and wonderful in its three hours in the oven that we're about to do, I'm just going to pop two cups of water in the bottom of my dish. And I also have in here a tray. If you don't have a tray that fits nicely into your dish, check out my blog for some other things you can do. Now I'm going to pop our beautiful piece of pork on top of that tray. And then I'm going to rub some wonderful olive oil over into the skin. And then you guessed it, a little bit more salt on top. And now there's some more salt. Also rubbed in. So for the first part of the cook, this goes into the oven at 130 degrees fan forced for three hours. Now we do need to keep an eye on it to make sure that the water doesn't go dry, but it shouldn't. My kitchen is really starting to smell amazing. But there's one more important step that we need to do before we can tuck into this porchetta. So first I'm going to check to make sure that there's still water in the dish, then crank up the oven to 230 degrees fan four centigrade for another half hour to get that perfect crackle. So let's have a look what she's up to. Now let's have a look, shall we? Now 
Now I'm going to use my temperature probe, but I, there's no way it's not cooked. Pop her in. And for pork, you really want it in and around between 65 and 70. And we're about 68. That's perfect. Look at that. Now, as always, the hardest part's in the waiting. And we have to let this rest for a good half hour before we slice it, just so that it maintains all its juices. As usual, I can't wait. Now, for all the details of today's recipe, don't forget to check out my blog at the link below. But as always, the best bits in the eating. Mm. The meat is so soft and juicy, it just melts in your mouth. The herbs pop, and of course, I'm sure you heard the crackle, the best bit. This is absolutely a celebratory dish. Perfect for our 100th episode, and also perfect for sharing at family celebrations. As it's Christmas, Miles and I would like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a safe and healthy New Year. Until next time, everybody, ciao.